Right now, new at 11, after Saturday's scare at a synagogue in Texas, the hostages, including the congregation's rabbi, talked about the security training they got and how much it helped them stay alive. And yes, it's not easy to think that faith-based communities need security training, but this weekend's incident shows how necessary it really is. As CBS 4's Joel Waldman shows us, this is already a harsh reality at some houses of worship in South Florida. Steve, we're inside St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Boca, and uh, what's the first thing you're looking for here? When you first step in, the biggest thing you want to do is start looking for exit signs. Uh, everyone's usually a creature of habit. Everybody knows the way that they usually come in, but they don't know the alternative ways to get out. So the service has begun, we're inside the chapel, and now what's going on in your head? I'm going to start now scanning for other pathways in case my evacuation route is cut off, that if I couldn't get out in an exit, I'm starting to scan and find other rooms that I can get into and isolate in where I can then close a door off from that problem. So you mentioned looking for other rooms. What kind of rooms might those be? Some of the rooms you might find in those places of worship could be an equipment room. Uh, you find bathrooms. You also find maybe a choir room that you can get into and also uh, start securing it. So this is right next to the pews. This is almost like a little closet area, right? Yes. So now we're in this little closet. We were talking about what do you do when you're in here? Once I'm in, I'm in here, I want to lock the door if I can, because I'm going to start building layers of resistance. I want to stay away from the doorway. I want to arm myself with a weapon of opportunity. Hopefully something has some weight to it, like a blunt object. And I really want to target the head and really try to achieve incapacitation. Rest assured, before you even enter a church or a synagogue or another house of worship, most are already taking precautionary measures. The shul in Bal Harbor is a great example. Our security does training on a regular basis, uh, active shooter, exits, bomb threats, etc., together with the PD, as well as on their own. So the rabbi in the hostage situation employed a pretty simple tactic. He ended up using a chair. How effective is that? It could be very effective, but the only reason why that was so successful is because he had training, and that training gave him confidence and empowered him to take action. And you're trying to achieve incapacitation, so when you do grab this chair, I'm going to target the head. And when I target the head, I'm going as hard as I can, committed to achieve that incapacitation. Rabbi Lipsgard tells us all these maneuvers are really just a sign of the times today. The reality is we're facing a challenging time around this country and around the world where there's divisiveness and hatred, and our job is to bring love, community, and unity together. So to reiterate again, there are five main tactics. What are they? We train evacuate, evade, isolate, secure, and defend. So we made it out safely. We evaded the threat. But how did we know we could leave at this point? Law enforcement is going to get on scene. You're going to know. You're going to hear the sirens. You're going to hear them moving through the structure. There will then be an organized evacuation. Stay safe, everyone. Joel Waldman, CBS4 News.